G'day there, Richard Musgrave Evans here again and welcome back. Now today I'm painting on Belgian linen instead of the canvas. Now it's got a clear primer on it so it's protected from the oil paint. So I'll be using oil paint today and palette knives. Now today I'm doing something a little different to what I've been doing recently. I've been doing a lot of painting in the creeks and the rivers, the beautiful rivers and the gum trees and everything's quite close up. So today I'm going to go for the opposite and paint the big vast distances that you get in Australia. So it's all about aerial perspective, atmosphere perspective, atmospheric perspective and just getting that feeling of great distance going on forever and ever which Australia tends to have. Alright so I've taped off a line quickly just to get my horizon level. I actually measured that because I wanted it to be exactly level so when the painting's finished there's not some weird angle going on. And I've just quickly blocked in a couple of uh, marks to get me started. Now, I've been on a recent trip up into the outback, up to Cooper Pedy, the opal mining town, which I believe produces the most opal in the world, and uh, currently. And it's a beautiful open landscape with what they call breakaway country, which is these flat top mountains out in the middle of the desert. And the opal's actually mined in right on the edge of one of these areas and this part's just out of town and it's called the breakaway. It's a beautiful area. You'll have to get out there if you can and have a look. But yeah, when you get out there it's just all about the beautiful ochres and the, the colour of the earth just varies like you would not believe. So this hill here is actually going to be a white mountain and it is actually a white mountain and right next to it's a yellow ochre one and there's some magentas and chocolate browns. It's great for the colourists. It's great to use colour on these particular subjects. Now I'm also going to be, like I said, about distance. So I'll be using the different effects of linear perspective, atmospheric perspective, aerial perspective, just a manipulation of the colours and tones to give the illusion of a three-dimensional world on the two-dimensional surface. I've got my reference over here today so I don't have to look over my shoulder so much. I might just block in a couple of the darks. So what do we got? Before I go any further, just put my alizarin crimson down, which I haven't got yet. There's a bit of that there. Okay, now I just want to feel this landscape, what I want, some dark. So I'll go for that alizarin crimson. A bit of magenta maybe, a bit of burnt sienna, make it quite a warm colour for now. Now I'm just going to feel where I want some of this here. And most of this will get painted over. That's not a drum, a bit of yellow ochre and magenta there. Just trying to create some undertones that'll be the shadow tones. I'm using a bit of yellow ochres for reflected light, a bit of magentas, any of those colours. Quite a nice effect. Just feeling the landscape how I want. I want it to flow out this way. I'm kind of flow like so. Compositionally, she's going to kind of run like this through the picture and then up into some cloud formations. Okay, now some bit of yellow ochres and burnt siennas. Just want to just sort of feel this cliff out a bit. You may be using a little bit more of a drag technique today because I do want a lot of the raw linen because it's such a beautiful colour to show through. So when you're working on the white canvas, you're pretty much covering most of it. You might leave a little bit, but because the colour of this linen is so close to the colour of the earth anyway, it's good to break it up and just leave a few patches here and there. It adds a bit of spice to the painting. So uh, we've got a mixture there of burnt siennas, uh, yellow ochres. Just filling that subject, might add a bit of white into that yellow ochre. It's very earthy tones out there. Just feeling it. It's actually really nice to be back on painting this. Painting on this surface again, the old uh, Belgian linen, it's good stuff. Video's still on, I just wanted to check that, that's good. I don't want to start painting and not have any uh, reference of it going, <laughs> of it happening, so. All right, so I'm just wiggling a bit of a composition through here. The eyes to lead out so. Go for a bit of chocolate browns. Like I said, we've got a lot of variety of colour today. Some magentas with the chocolate browns. 
just lightening the tone a bit with a bit more white in it. I'll add a little bit of blue just to knock it back, which is the opposite side of the colour wheel. Just get a bit of that in there. All right, so I'll just stand back and have a look at that. All right, got something going there. Darkening it a little bit here and there. Like I said, these are only the shadows going up now. Just to give it that perspective, you're obviously going to have the darks in the foreground and it's going to recede lighter and lighter to get the atmospheric perspective. Right, now what do we need here? Might go for some... I'll use this palette knife for a minute. Just going to raise the edge of this mountain a little bit here. It's a beautiful white mountain. Like I said, these mountains are made out of all different ochres and and even white, so it's a real keynote. Let's put some of these in. I'll put a tiny bit of yellow ochre with it, just to help it harmonise to the other one so it doesn't stand out and say, hey, I'm from a different subject altogether. It's got to have something that harmonises a little with this other hill, which is ochres. And also, I'll just put a little bit of that just a little bit of that white into this hill itself too. The beautiful rich colours in here. Burnt sienna, yellow ochre, lovely stuff. Really enjoying working on this surface, okay. Now, <clears throat> what I'll do is, I think the sky is a very important thing. There's a lot of this sky around, so the painting's taking up a large proportion. The sky is taking up a large proportion in the painting. So we better get some of that in. That's mainly white. There's a little bit of other colours on the knife there. That's fine. I'll put a bit of burnt sienna. I'm trying to key the sky down. Ultramarine blues and burnt siennas. Getting down to the low horizon area through here. Like I said, because there's so much distance, you're going to need to have it really keyed down to set, set it up so your eyes feel like you've got something to work with here. You'll have some really brighter colors here and it'll fade into the distance atmospherically and also Aerial perspective, so the clouds are going to start off bigger at the top, obviously, and get smaller to give that feeling that you're going in forever and ever. But it's very important getting those colour changes, subtle colour changes, right too, to give the illusion of distance. So, let's have a look at what we got here. Just a little bit more blue. Things tend to go kind of blue in the distance, so... Try not to touch that light blue line too much. I'll just leave it for now, a bit of a gap. And if I feel like smearing them together later on, then I will. But for now, just leave the tiniest gap there. Great stuff. Okay, now I'm pretty excited about painting this because I really enjoyed the trip up there. It's fantastic to get into the outback and just see those vast distances and just the arid beauty, I guess. Such a, there can be such a beauty in the aridness. Okay, so let's just get some of these colours on. Now I might darken it a little bit with a little bit more magenta, ultramarine blue and a bit of burnt sienna to get a little bit more of a, a moody sky around this white cliff that way I've got something to really accent again so just get a little bit more magenta and burnt sienna <clears throat> excuse me that way I've really got something to accent 
this cleft to really get it to pop. I'll tell you what I'm going to do here. Get a bit of paper towel first. Just go for a slightly smaller knife. I've got to, got to get into these areas here. Oh, there we go, look at that. That's nice. Yep. So we just drop in. Healing our way down. It's actually a really nice thing to paint on, I have to say. This, uh, this Belgian linen. Toned Belgian linen. Give it a go. Clear primed Belgian linen. Give it a go and leave a comment below and let me know what you think about it. The thing I like about it is you can do what I'm doing now, kind of open it up and leave a lot of a lot of linen showing through. Now I'm just trying to feel this. You can let the linen do the work. It's a beautiful colour and it's a natural based looking product so it's just got just a, hang on, I'll just put a bit more ultramarine blue in that. Yeah so it's just got a lovely look about it. Now that's a bit too purple because that's got too much magenta. So what I'll do is I'll go burnt siennas and ultramarine blue just to change that a bit. I'm trying to get it fairly dark. A bit more burnt sienna. The underside of these clouds can get a real brown in them because what's happening is the earth, the full midday sun is shining on the earth and bouncing back up and on the underside of these clouds you can really get whoops you can really get that brown colour as it bounces back up on underneath and it looks great. Okay, now a bit more white. So I've got some yellow open white there. I'm just going to introduce just a little bit of the feeling of the clouds with a light shining on So, just adding a little bit here and there. A bit more of the ultramarine blues and burnt siennas and alizarin mix. Lightened up a bit with some white. Bit of dark there, it's cool, creates a bit of variety. Just kind of feeling this composition as I go. A bit more of the blues as it gets lower because it's receding down into the distance. You're getting the atmospheric perspective, so you're getting more of the blues like so in the shadows of the clouds. Lighten that a bit by getting rid of that harsh line. And everything's becoming more lateral in the distance. Everything's more flat like so. As things come up they become more upright and same with here with the foreground. Everything in the foreground can be all different weird angles but the further it goes back the more it becomes absolutely horizontal until the horizon. Perfectly horizontal. All right. Okay, let's just go for some straight ultramarine and a bit of magenta, much stronger colour. You got your ultramarines there. I'm 
he had a really dark color up here. Top of the sky, make it beautiful and dark. Gives you a lot of, gives you a lot to work with. By going such a dark accent there, you really can get that three-dimensional because you've got so much difference to work with between what you've got up there and what you can do as you get lower. Much bigger contrast. That's a bit too dark now, so I'll just lighten it a little bit. A bit more white. This is what you call fun. Now I'm just going to get a bit of that thalo blue, which is more of a green blue, as we discussed in previous videos. It's a uh, really strong pigment, but it's also more of a green. And as the sky gets lower, it tends to have more green in it and less of the red. The red's up in the top. Gets a little bit more green as it comes down here. As a general rule, not always, of course, everything varies. and have a look at what I've got. Okay, that's starting to form. Now, go for some sort of lighter mid-tone. Here we go, a light grey up here. Some of this, it's all varying, the clouds are all different. A little bit lighter and more neutral here. Then they drift into other stuff so you can get the little palette knife marks to get those intermediate tones. And a bit of blending like so it really starts to pull the colours together a little more. Just make sure I'm not wearing any paint. I think we're all good. those colours together a bit more. Because clouds, as a pretty big rule, are fairly soft, so you don't want too many hard edges or you lose that feeling of a cloud. There we go, soften. Variety of marks. Now I'll just say one thing about clouds. I'm painting a lot as a shadow version of the cloud there. Hang on, let's have a look at this. Just adjust that camera a bit more. Just adjust that camera a little bit more so you can so you can see it a little clearer. It's all in the picture. I don't want to leave any out. Okay now. Up the top here there's going to be a lot of white in the light source of the cloud. And a lot of say yellow ochres and cads as highlights, cad yellows, but as it goes down further and you get to these lower sections here, I find a pretty good colours burnt sienna mixed with that. Good starting point. So that's burnt sienna and white. And it gives you a kind of a peachy, peachy type of orange colour. And that colour Just seems to set it, set it back into the distance further. I'm just 
sticking it out here and there where I think I need some. Now, as you get lower again, you could even throw a little bit of magenta in maybe and blue. These really low clouds. You can have those sort of tones in them. Really sets it back and looks like it's miles away. Blend that a little. There we go. Right, now, can I use a bit of yellow oak with those thalos? What I've mixed up here now is ultramarine blue, thalo blue, and plenty of white. Tiniest bit of yellow ochre, just the tiniest bit to set it off. That's a bit more like it, so it's not quite as green. But there is some sort of green suggestion in it. Okay, now these lower clouds, to get them to set back, the shadow tone needs to be more of a blue. It's more of a brown up here and more of a magentas and whatever. But down here, more of a blue to make it go back. that nice clean. Just pulling some of those colours down closer to the horizon. Just feeling that perspective and distance as it goes back forever. a bit of paint off because the sky's dropped a bit low, bring it back to that horizon. A little bit of pull throughs to soften. But you can see there's a, a good distance starting to develop right there. Now I might mix up a little bit of magentas and whites. Use this big knife. Burnt siennas, magentas, I'm trying to mix up, I'll get a bit of these blues in here because I want to drop back. I'm trying to mix up a fairly neutral subdued tone that'll kind of dictate what the distance itself, a bit more burnt sienna, the colour of the earth itself in the distance. Just a little bit of that intermixed with that. It's not bad. And before I go any further, I'll just get some ultramarine blue. Fairly strong, because I want to put, it's quite strong, I'll just lighten it a little bit. I just want to put a shadow, an undertone shadow. I like to put the darks in first, so just gonna stick a bit of a shadow in here. Then I'll get back into my mixing up here. Now I'm sticking a bit of that blue into this colour here so it's not quite so intense. Just working it in. Getting that distance to drop right back. It's all about the illusion of near to far, you see. So what we do is we'll use cleaner colours as we get closer, more of the yellow ochres and burnt siennas. 
and as it drops off it gets more of the uh, blues and the browns mixed in with it to set it back a bit. Filling those colours into the gaps. Now there's a lot of variety anyway in the, uh, like I said, the colour of the rocks has an extreme amount of variety in it. So we've got to be playing with all that as well. There's a lot of subtleties going on here. Not only am I painting the colour of the earth as it recedes into the distance, but I'm also painting all the variety of the colour of the earth as it recedes into the distance. Now I'm going for a bit of alizarin crimson, cad yellow deep, there's some really nice high key oranges in here and I'm going to use them as a keynote. Lightly drag it in like so, just letting the knife jump around and do what it needs to do. Great accents. Some more white. Just want to feel some variety of colours coming down here. So I'm varying, like I said, on the knife. I've got all different colours to try and get it. I have chocolate browns and ochres and all the variants that you could possibly imagine in a beautiful coloured so I'll go some burnt sienna cat orange here to put a real rich toning down in here like so yellow ochres and burnt siennas very rich varying it Feeling the movement and energy of the landscape as it goes. And the colour variance in the rocks, etc. Yeah, some beautiful white and magenta, just so much variety. Some of the rocks in, up close literally are almost magenta and white, like through this area here. It's just like so, it's just beautiful. And it quickly turns to yellow ochre. Just here. Wipe it clean so I haven't got too much of the blue. There was a bit of too much sky blue in that thing. Just lightly drag it on. Let's feel the different colours. Like I said, I'm varying all the foreground. A variety. Dragging. All right, so with some of those ultramarine blues and whites, I'm going to paint some of the the cloud shadows cast down onto the earth from obviously the clouds so they're just beautiful lateral very lateral because they're a long way away marks like so and that can lead the eye in and create a lot of interest in whatever else you need now you place them Randomly where you think they randomly where you think they should go, and uh, I'll put one just here. So what that's doing is it's sending the eyes back into the distance with that. 
aerial perspective, very long lateral marks. I'll just clean it up. I'm taking some paint off here to get those marks very lateral. And it'll be a combination of hard and soft, of course, like always. Now, back into the sky. We've got a lot of foreground going there. Hang on. Before we go any further, I'll just go a bit of white. A little bit of cad yellow deep. Really pick out the accent of that here. <clears throat> Sorry. Really pick out the accent of that hill, so some warm tones, warm and cool contrast, but at the moment we've mainly got warm. Smearing technique to help blend those rocks together. Like so, pull through like so. Helps to blend it all together. Right, let's have a look at this now. I think what I need to do here Add a bit more sky, etc., and blend a little bit more so there's a bit less canvas showing. Or linen, I should say, in this particular instance. We'll start to work on the sky a bit more again. So here we go. Just put that up in there. Blending, mixing things together, getting those warm and cool contrasts of those clouds starting to blend together. Pulling through, wiping clean. Confident marks, always looks good in a painting. You can do the small marks to get a sort of blending and whatever, and then do some confident marks once you've got the blending. Really, <coughs> to really pull it together. Right now, let's have a look. We'll just stand back and check it out for a minute. What do we got? We're starting to get good distance there. I can see that, so that's good. It's always a good thing. I'm going to use some pure white up here to really give the feeling of looking up into the heavens and really giving that atmospheric three-dimensional aspect that I was talking about. We're up here where things are literally closer to you because it's above your head rather than being miles off into the distance. Things have a much stronger tone range and even colour concept. So there'll be a little bit of CAD colours thrown into that to really contrast against the blue. Like so, a bit of smearing to blend them together. So that foreground sky, I guess you could call it, is really contrasting and bright. And down here we've got all the uh, more subtle colours, I guess. Wind always goes soft edges. Don't forget the clouds are soft. Even though you want dramatic contrast in your sky, of course you do. You still got to remember to have a lot of softness. Starting to get something happening here, which I'm quite pleased about. Right, always got to stand back and have a look, see what you've got going. Okay. Just to grab a bit of paper towel over here. Really trying to get that hill to pop, that is the key note of the painting there. That is where the biggest accents are. 
the most white, it's an incredibly white hill. It's almost hard to believe when you see it in real life. It's just like unbelievably white. Which makes it a great, a great accent. Now, of course, if you've got something white, just get a bit of magenta here. What do we got? Really light tone. Just mixing magenta and white, a really light tone, a bit of blue. Because if you've got something white, it'll have usually the complementary colour uh, of the sun. The sun's kind of a yellowy white. So the shadows themselves quite often, and not always, but quite often, have a bit of a blue colour, which I've got here. And it's a great way to get the contrast of warm and cool again. A bit of smearing. You get your contrast of warm and cool, and really it's also, in the shadows, it's a bit of a re reflection from the sky, I guess. You're reflecting, the sky's reflecting into the shadows, and because the sky is generally fairly cool, blues and stuff. Get that clean. Because it's fairly blue, then the shadows obviously down here are going to be light and blue as well. So in a white surface, painting a white surface now. Like I said, I'll introduce some white into here to help mould them together. In reality, this hill was incredibly white. That was yellow ochre. It had a little bit of white, but it was almost pure yellow ochre. But that could look like too much of a contrast in a painting and people will just say when they look at it, well, that's a weird colour hill and it doesn't match the one next to it. So what you do is to get them to blend, you put a bit of that colour into that one and a bit of that colour into that one so your eyes can accept it and say, oh, fair enough. They were two different coloured hills next to each other, but at least they're still kind of related to each other. Just skim that through, look at that. Skim it through, that's it. There's all these dancing little creeks, little washouts where the, uh, the water's been eroding over the years, so you flow that in. Some pure whites in here. Such a joy to paint with so many colours. And I'm just painting the earth, I mean that, I really enjoy that. It's a fantastic landscape out there, fantastic now. Just pull that through. Now, I think I've got a bit too much there, so what I'll do is get the edge of the knife and take bits off again. That's the beauty of the palette knife. You can put it on. And, just pull through. and then you can take bits off by just lifting the knife like so. Then I can smear like that. Okay, so that's taking it back into the distance. Just in there, there's a... Hang on, I'll just stand back and have a look what I've got. Okay. Yeah, I think I'll go for a little bit more of the ochres in through here. Just lighten it a bit. With a bigger knife. Always working around. I'm getting back into this sky again. A bit more blending, softening. Get the gradations of those blues happening. That's good, that's good. Okay, I'll stand back and have a look, see what we've got. It's getting there now, that foreground. Just need some work. Beautiful raw colours of magentas and ochres lightly dragging to let the canvas do its trick. Some pure colours like so. Uh, that. 
little bit lighter there, maybe. A bit lighter there. Variety of marks, there's a bit of erosion there. Speaking about erosion, what have we got? There's a little bit of shadows kicking around here, I'll just stick them in. So this time I'm going to use a bit of burnt sienna. Feeling the variety of the Just put a bit more of these yellow ochres and burnt siennas just off here. Stand back and see what we've got, eh? They? Oops. Yeah, that's coming along. Now I'm getting a feeling of distance. What I think I'll do is I'll get the ultramarine blue really contrast some of these areas by putting a dark shadow, beautiful dark shadow, like we were saying before, the darkness of things in the foreground, more contrasting as it goes back, things lighten off, become flatter. Up here in the foreground there's a lot of action with the dark tones to achieve that perspective of things going back. Just lighten it a little bit. Just want to get some of those blues in there. The contrast, the beautiful oranges and ochres and whatever else is in this section. Those really fine lines of blue, a complementary colour. Like I said earlier, it's a shadow colour, but also you get to work with the complementary colour, which is the colour on the opposite side of the colour wheel from orange, which really makes it pop when you put them together. So we'll just put more of those shadows in here and there, randomly. That'll tend to give it more depth as it goes back. always working around now I'm just introducing some more light source in the clouds themselves softening things a bit there. I just want to, like I said, clouds are, you want them to be dramatic and stand out, but you also want them to be like a cloud, which is a soft thing floating along in the sky. So just make sure you keep that in mind as you're painting them. There goes a bit of white and <laughs> flicked across to the floor there. How oh, well, you get that. Not to worry. There's a little bit more orange in the white as it's going, not too much. 
like I was saying earlier, that burnt sienna down here sets it off, sends it back. So I'm just introducing a bit more colour like that as I go down the painting. A bit more of the ochres and different things like that. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, so I've mixed up some quite cool blues and I'm introducing them down low here with all these little cumulus clouds are going. Just the coolest, faintest little blue, very lateral little marks as it goes off into the distance. Forever and ever. Trying to create that great depth now. Just lighten the tone a little bit as I go back. The lower it gets, the lighter the tone should get. And we'll just put this. Very light blues. But next to those peachy oranges, it really pops and gives you that complimentary colour feeling and also sets it back and makes it go off forever. You feel like you can just journey off forever into the painting, that great feeling of depth. It's always a really nice thing. I've always loved distance. So, sticking into a painting just really is a very relaxing, it's very relaxing to see something just go off and off forever into the distance. That's my, my feeling. So these blues, a bit of ultramarine, but I've got a little bit of phthalo with them to make them ever so slightly greener. And what I'll do is I'll introduce a little bit up here. There's reflected light in the clouds. There'll be warm light from underneath, from the earth. But the cloud will also be reflecting the sky itself in it. So it's good to put both in. Stand back and have a look. Always got to analyze from a distance. That's starting to get some good depth. That's good. Now, like I was saying earlier, the underside of the clouds have some beautiful ochres and whatever from the beautiful warm earth here reflecting back up into the underside of the clouds, particularly on an arid landscape like this, can produce a lovely effect where you get these really warm tones on the underside of the cloud and it just looks like magic. And so I'm just going to add a little bit of that in. It's just that reflected light coming back up. coming up like so. It just gives that feeling of full sunlight, which is always what we're striving for, I guess. That feeling of light. Just working it into different areas on the canvas.
Okay, so now I'm getting a lot done, which is great. Get some pure white. Some of those CAD deep colours, real stinging, pinging colours. And just feel where you want to put some light and accents to make this colourful ochre varied outback picture make it really sing and dance by putting some good strong accents here and there not too many like it's all about knowing where to put it to get the eye to flow through the picture Okay, well, yes, I'm pretty happy with what I've got there now. Uh, the concept of the painting was to give the illusion of distance, a three-dimensional world on a two-dimensional surface and try and get as much distance near to far as I could, and I feel like I've achieved that. And uh, like I was saying, the breakaways themselves, this mountain range, this outback mountain range in South Australia is just a fantastic subject for the artist. I mean, where do you find a white hill, for example, in a landscape? And those hills are really are white, and there's all these ochres and there's magentas, chocolate browns, the whole thing. And then, of course, you've got the vast distance as well with the elevation. So, great combination for painting beautiful pictures and playing with colour. All right, now, as you can see here, we've got the pure whites and the browns and the strong blues to bring it all up here. And then as we drop down, everything gets way more subtle and way more lateral. And it's the same with the foreground here. The foreground's quite vertical and chunky and marks going all different ways like this. But then, as it recedes into the distance, everything becomes much more horizontal and just lying down. And that's a great way to give the feeling of distance, whether you're painting an abstract painting or painting somewhere in the middle. This particular piece is fairly real, but of course very abstract. We'll get that camera off in a minute and have a closer look, and you can just see how much colour in the way I've played with light and colour. But at the same time, getting it right, it will give the illusion of a picture, illusion, a lot of depth and sunlight. All right, well, in saying that, I might get that camera off and let you have a look around and see what you think. And oh, if you haven't already, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell. That way you'll be made aware of any of these videos and won't miss them as I upload them. And also, if you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and spread the good word to your mates and all the rest of the good stuff. All right, let's get the camera off and we'll have a look. No worries. Thank you.